Okay, so we have a very common GED st style problem here where it just says simplify, gives a very generic direction, simplify, and we have a problem here. And I will just let you know what the word simplify means. Um, it's not a very specific uh, phrase in math. When I use the word simplify, I'm just telling you to perform the indicated operations. Basically do what you're told. And how are we told to do operations? Well, with our symbols like plus, minus, multiply, divide, those various symbols that we know, those are our operation symbols. They tell us what operations to perform. And so I can see when I look at this problem, there's a few operations going on. There's definitely addition. I see a plus sign. There's subtraction. I see a minus sign. There's also multiplication. These two parentheses shoved up next to each other with nothing in between them tell me that I'm multiplying. Now currently, if you know anything about algebra, you know that I cannot do this addition that's shown in this grouping right here. Even though the order of operations would tell me to start inside of a grouping, I can't in this case because I'm not allowed to add um, terms that are not like. I can only add like terms. These terms are not like. One is uh, has an X on it, three X's. One is just a plain old number, four. I can't add X's with plain old numbers. Okay. And I have the same problem in this parentheses. So I'm not going to be able to do the addition or the subtraction. But what I can do right now is do the multiplication. Okay, so let us start there. Now, do remember that back in the day, ever since we've started math, if you have a multi-digit number, 34, well, one way to think about 34 is it's 30 plus 4. And you have another multi-digit number, let's imagine you had 25. Well, since the beginning of time, ever since we've done math, we've had this overarching principle, whether we realize it or not, that multiplication passes out. Think about how you would do a problem like this. You would do 5 times 4, 20. But then you wouldn't stop with the 5 there. After you multiplied the 5 by the 4, you would take the 5 and multiply it by the 3. You would multiply every digit in the second number with every digit in the first number. So let's finish this up. 5 times 3 would be 15, plus 2 would be 17. And 2 times 4 would be 8, and 2 times 3 would be 6, and I passed out the 2. Now I passed out to the 4, and I passed out to the 3. Then once I was done passing out all the numbers down here, what would I do with my answers? Well, I would add them up. The process that I'm going to go through here for multiplying these kind of numbers, these kind of numbers, by the way, are known as binomials, meaning that they each have two terms. Uh, two things, adding or subtracting. So this is two terms, one, two, and this is two terms, one, two. So they're binomials. Okay. Um, so the process when multiplying binomials is just like this old-fashioned process that we've done back in the day. We're going to pass out every term in the first parentheses and multiply it with every term in the second parentheses. And as long as we're organized about our work, we shouldn't have any problems about this. So let me start with 3x, the first term, and I'm going to multiply it by the first term over here. Well, 3 times 3 is 6. Just go ahead and put the number portion first. Now let's deal with the variable for portion. I just want to think about what x times x is. Remember, you can express repeated multiplication using exponents. x times x is x squared, or 2 x's multiplying. And so that's what I'll write there, 6 x squared. Okay. Now, I'm not finished yet. I'm going to take this 3x and I'm going to pass it out to, to the next number. A minus 5 or a negative 5. Make sure you keep the sign with it. So 3x times negative 5 would give me negative 3 times negative 5, 15. And I just have the 1x this time, so I'll just shove it right there. Uh, and when a number and a letter are shoved together like this, you just know they're multiplying. Now I'm done passing out the 3x. It's time to pass out the 4. Positive 4. So positive 4 times 2x is 8x. Now, a lot of students make a mistake here, and they just write the 8x like this. But be careful. You've now turned these two terms that you should have been finding into something multiplying. See how there's nothing between this x and this 8? You're turning it into multiplication. Yet we knew when we found the different answers down here, after we were done finding them, we added them. These things should all be adding or subtracting all your terms. So let me just erase that 8x. And you are going to need some kind of a sign here. So you have to ask yourself, was it a positive 8x or a negative 8x? Well, it was a positive, and so I'll put plus 8x. 
If it had been a negative, you would have put minus like we did with the 15. And now I'll do this. Plus 4 times negative 5 would give me negative 20 or minus 20. Okay. And so now I see that I have this answer here where I have four terms. Now it might be possible to do addition or subtraction even though it wasn't possible in my groupings. I can see that now I do have like terms. Take a look at this. There is a plain old x term. And there is a plain old x term. Again, remember to grab their signs, consider their signs with the terms. And now I'm combining like terms. This is addition subtraction. Don't get mixed up. I'm not multiplying anymore. But I'm asking myself, what is negative 15x plus 8x? Okay, well, that's negative 7x. Now, there's no other x squared terms, so there's no one like for 6x squared to combine with, so he just drops. And there's no other constant terms, no other plain number terms. And so same thing, negative 20 will just drop. And this is simplified. And I gotta tell you, this is where I see my A students separate from my B students. Because my A students know they're done, they did all the simplifying they could do, and they move on to the next problem. And my B students will often waste 20 minutes now trying to do this subtraction and put all these things together. But there's no true way to do that. Because these are not like terms, I am not allowed to add and subtract them. I am done. This problem is done. The answer is a trinomial, um, a polynomial with one, two, three terms.